colleague, a market editor, if you're in Ekop, is also live in the studio. Uh, Ekop, you take it from where uh, Mr. Mohammed stopped. It's the start of a new quarter. I'm particular about that. This is the last quarter of the year. Uh, I know the politicking season two, you know, as we move ahead yes, to, to, to the elections next year. We've said uh, repeatedly that uh, this is the time that the market would be weak reasonably. And uh, for this month of October, certainly many analysts would not expect large volume of uh, threats for obvious reason. Take away economic issues the way they are. Uh, we've launched full political activities now. So you have seen even during the holidays, many people were up doing, and that's just what is going to be. We will be getting more information on the streets and then uh, from state capitals all through. Politics is going to dominate the scene. And as it happens, uh, stock market activities and indeed some other economic issues will definitely take uh, the back seats. Because mm. the focus will be on what the politicians want, you know. So on today's trading, system. what's your reaction to this as we wrap Today's up? trading, we have the loser's uh, basket coming basically from Access Corporation, then Transcorp. So, you know, the two of them, there are big securities. And uh, because they were down, some other fries, you know, joined the thing and markets uh, depressed very seriously. Talking about assets corporation, you've seen in recent times, it's been, and then even banking securities, majority of them have uh, driven the market down, even though we expect a lot of uh, liquidity from the so, subsector. Uh, then others, basically insurance uh, uh, companies, and, uh, you know, we call them... Uh, um, penny stocks, but some of them have without the stop. To the majority of the companies are still experiencing pressure, economic pressure, very seriously. Yeah. Talk about the insurance sector. Many people, many companies, after um, COVID-19, yeah, COVID have been quoted. putting pressure on the insurance sector, you know, to redeem their... Uh, obligations and bring them back to you know, normal levels of uh, activities. And this is not an e easy thing for some of the insurance companies. And majority of them, they are medium level companies. They are not so big. Their capital operation, you know, just uh, uh, average. Yeah. Uh -huh. And when you know that our attitude to insurance is not that positive. So, well, somehow we need to encourage the sector, you know, to, I think that if you want me to judge insurance companies, in the last five years, I think they have done very, very well because awareness is beginning to, you know, show up. Yeah. But uh, uh, with the pressure that we have now, more people looking to the sector, I don't know how they will cope. All right, then. Thank you so much, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Echo, uh, for your time on the show as usual. It's my pleasure. All right, let's go outside our shores. Global stocks climb for a second day after Britain's decision to ditch part of a controversial tax court plans and slightly parallel expectations for aggressive central bank's actions returned some confidence to investors. Now, MSCI's broadest index of Asian Pacific shares outside Japan rose 1.7%, led by gains in Australia, while Eurostock 600 traded higher at 2%, with London FTSE gaining 1%. S&P 500 features rose 1%, following a 2.6% bounce for the index. On the currency market, the pounds gained 0.6% against the dollar to trade at $1.1390, while the dollar slid against a basket of major currencies.